Welcome to Square Wing Games. My name is Exonovan, and this is my Road to Completion Guide for Untitled Goose Game. In this series, I will show you how to unlock every single trophy and achievement this game has to offer, and I really hope you enjoy the run. Two quick announcements before we get started. Number one, always make sure you're checking down below in the description of each one of the videos in this series for a full video timeline in case you want to skip around to a specific part of the guide. And the second thing is to always read my pinned comment. It'll be the very first comment down in the comment section. If I have to make a correction with the guide, whether it be the gameplay or something I say in the commentary, I will always list those corrections down below in my pinned comment. If it's your first time watching one of my guides, just know that I monitor my comments 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you ever have a question about this guide or any of the other guides on my channel, make sure that you leave a comment and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. That's all the announcements I have for you guys. Enjoy the guide. So the first thing that we want to do before we get into the game is go into our options menu. Of course, you can check out other settings if you want to, but the main two that I want you to look at is the text, okay? Whether you want plain text or whether you want things to be in cursive, that's entirely up to you guys. I prefer it to be on plain text. It's a lot easier to read uh, when you get into the speed runs. I will talk more about speed runs at the end of this episode, but for now, go ahead and press square to honk. Anytime you press square and you honk, you'll be able to interact with people in the environment. You can see here that it's telling us to press X to run. Now notice how wide my turns are. See how I'm not able to stick to that path? I'm running into rocks and objects in the environment. That's because in order to make tight and precise turns, the game wants you to let off of the X button, make the turn, and then hold down the X button again to sprint off in any direction. Now I want you to notice how tight and precise my running animation is. And I'm not holding down the X button and letting off to make my turns. I'm actually spamming the X button. So basically you have two options when it comes to running in this game. You can hold down the X button, let off of the X button when it's time to make a turn. When you make that turn, hold down the X button again to sprint off in a direction. But you're gonna be making those wide turns along the way if you accidentally hold down the X button while you're trying to turn at the same time. If you wanna avoid that, okay, you can do exactly what I'm doing in this gameplay and just spam that X button constantly. You'll always have precise movements over the goose if you do it that way. So I would encourage you to take this time and master the running method you wanna use for the rest of this series. Trust me guys, when it comes to these speed runs, running is so crucial. I know that seems trivial because we've been playing games our whole life, running with the character is not a big deal. You only have seven minutes to complete a list of tasks, okay? And if you're making wide turns and running into things, it's gonna cost you seconds and that can make or break your speed runs. You also want to master other animations like holding down the L2 button and go underneath objects. You can see that in the gameplay now. You'll see on my next pass, I'm gonna pick up the tennis ball by holding down the L2 button and hitting O. And then I'm gonna quickly put the tennis ball back on the stump. See how fluid that motion was? I went underneath the object, picked up the tennis ball, moved it straight to the stump. I'm going from one object to the next. You wanna become very comfortable controlling the goose before you continue. Just before I got into the water, you saw me flapping my wings. I was just holding down the R2 button. We're only gonna use that gameplay mechanic one time in this run, so it's really not all that important. You can see here that I'm tapping R1 to zoom out and L1 to zoom in. You will never have to zoom in during the series, but you'll definitely have to zoom out from time to time, so just make sure you have that memorized. So now we can finally start working on some trophies. The first trophy is called Nasty. We have to lock the groundskeeper out of the garden. So let's go ahead and turn the water on, and then we're gonna grab the radio. Notice the bubble icon that shows up over his head. That lets you know that he's focused on whatever object you're moving at that particular time. Now I want you to notice what happens here. As soon as I drop the radio, his focus shifts to the water. Now in just a second, we're gonna shift his focus from the radio to the keys. Now we need those keys to be able to get this trophy because we have to lock him out of the garden. Notice I grab the keys. Now he's worried about the keys. 
I'm gonna drop the keys and then boom, his focus goes back to the radio. Now all we have to do to get the trophy is wait for him to walk away because remember, now his focus is on the radio. Once he gets far enough away, grab the keys, go inside of the garden, drop the keys by pressing O, go up to the gate, press O, that will be enough to lock the gate and now you can get the trophy nasty. You'll also notice from time to time that we're completing part of a checklist. You just saw that there uh, when I got the trophy nasty, it said lock the groundskeeper out of the garden. A line went through the text. That's me checking that off my master to do list for this area. We'll talk more about the to do list once we get into our speed run at the end of this episode. But for now, I want you to come over here and move this crate. And then I want you to roll the cabbage all the way over to the picnic blanket. We have to do this in order to get a trophy called Yummy. Now there's two ways to get the cabbage out of the garden. You can give the keys back to the gardener, which is what you saw me do earlier in the gameplay. He will then take the keys, unlock the gate, come back into the garden, but he will leave the gate open. So now you have the option of moving the cabbage out of the garden using the front entrance, or the side entrance. Now we're gonna use the side entrance now because I want you to get used to pushing objects in water. That's gonna come in handy once we hit these speed runs. But I want you to know that you always have options. And that is the perfect segue into speed runs. Speed runs will be the most time consuming, challenging thing that you guys are gonna do in this game. All the other trophies are super simple, okay? Now, I've built in some buffer time to these speed runs. It's usually a minute, maybe even two. I want to say that this first area speed run takes me a little bit longer because you'll see that sometimes the AI does not always do what you want them to do. And that's why I've got the buffer time in there. I think this particular speed run that we're about to do uh, is my, I guess if you want to call it my worst one, I still beat it by like a minute. But I think all the other speed runs, I have about a two minute lead on those, maybe a minute 45 seconds, which gives you time to, you know, make a few errors. If the AI responds a little bit weird, it gives you time to recover. But the main thing I want you to take away from this is that there's multiple ways to move objects in and out of these environments. If at any point the people are not behaving like they're behaving in my gameplay, I will always have another way you can move that object out of the environment. So after you pick up the yummy trophy, go ahead and restart your checkpoint. That resets all the items in the area, and now we can officially start our speed run. The first thing that we need to do is get into the garden using the secret entrance. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen, checked off of our to-do list, and then pick up the flower. No matter where the groundskeeper is, find him. You can even honk with the flower in your mouth, run up to him, just get his attention, get him to focus on the flower, and then drop it. He'll pick it up and carry it over to the plant bed. As soon as he goes to plant it again, grab the hat off his head and run it around the corner by the gate and drop it. Now you have to be quick about this because if the groundskeeper sees you leave the area, he'll leave out of the front gate and go around to pick it up. If that happens, just reset the checkpoint and try again. Notice how his focus has shifted. He's looking for a new hat to put on because we just stole his other hat, right? While he's distracted, grab the pumpkin, take it out of the secret entrance and put it in the river. Now there's something very important I want you to understand about this game. You do not have to be watching the people perform the action to get credit. Notice at the bottom of the screen, boom, make the groundskeeper wear his sun hat. This is so important when it comes to speed running. You wanna multitask, okay? Notice we got the pumpkin in the river, we're grabbing the carrot now, and then in the meantime, he was over there putting on the sun hat. So we got three things done in a small amount of time. Now you have to be really careful when you're putting these items in the water. You can see that I put the carrot in the water in a specific spot because I know there's no weeds that it can get hung up on. The pumpkin, if you go back and watch the gameplay, I made sure that it was in the middle of the river. And that's because I wanted it to flow down straight and not get caught on the weeds either. Remember, it's all about multitasking. Here I'm drawing the groundskeeper out using the radio. I'm gonna drop the radio in the water so that it turns off, that way he doesn't follow us. In the meantime, he's gotten close enough to the water so that he got wet. See that? That marks something off of our to-do list at the bottom of the screen. Meanwhile, the pumpkin and the carrot are getting ever so closer to the picnic area, which is where we eventually have to get them to. 
Now this is a part of the speed run where you guys can save about 20 seconds. If you remember the first time I got the keys off the groundskeeper, I eased up to him. I waited for those white lines to show up around the keys, hit the O button, got them and ran away, no problem. But if you're too aggressive, if you don't wait for the white lines to show up around the keys, if he's not fully distracted, all of those elements come into play when you're trying to take something off of a person, okay? You have to be careful about that. If you're too aggressive and they see you, they're going to start shooing you away like you just saw him do back there with me. And that will, of course, cost you guys time because you'll be locked into that animation where your wings are flapping. So it's always better to be cautious around these people. I would rather you guys waste five to seven seconds trying to get those keys off that groundskeeper than 20 because you're being too aggressive. Now this is the point of the speed run where it's great to have options. The front entrance is open and so is the side entrance. So you wanna grab the jam and the thermos. I've already got the jam and I've taken it to the river. That's because he was not at the side entrance. So I took it to the river. If he would have been blocking the side entrance, I would have taken it out of the front gate. And the same thing goes for the thermos. He was blocking the side entrance, so I took it out of the front gate. So you'll have to determine where he is in the garden when you're trying to steal the jam and the thermos and then make adjustments accordingly. Now at this point, there's only two reasons to go back in the garden, but we don't have to worry about those now. We're gonna save those for the end of the speed run. And if you guys have done everything correctly to this point, you do not have to worry about the groundskeeper leaving the garden. If you look in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you can see that I made a timer for you guys. It's currently at three minutes, 14 seconds. If I were you, I would have a timer sitting next to you when you do these speed runs. The time officially starts for these speed runs as soon as you honk. So you know you come out of that restart checkpoint, you're gonna be given a camera angle of the groundskeeper walking around doing a bunch of stuff. As Soon as you hit square, that starts the speed run. Now in order to successfully complete the speed run and get the trophies, we have to do everything on the checklist before the church bells ring. Now for those of you who are using your own timer, you won't really have to worry about this because your timer will tell you if you're getting close to the seven minutes. For those of you who are not using a timer, if you hear the church bells ring, it's been more than seven minutes, you'll have to restart and try it again. Now I know that there's a lot going on with the speed run, a lot of things we have to move. Here's the best way to break down these speed run guys, one step at a time. Pausing the game does not affect the church bells ringing. Your timer stops. This means you can break down these speed runs one step at a time, okay? So you would pause your game. As soon as you drop the carrot off, you would pause your game. You would go, okay, where's Exonovic going next? Okay, he's getting in the river. He's going over there to get the jam. He's gonna take it back to the picnic. Meanwhile, your game is paused. Your timer has stopped. You're just memorizing one step at a time, okay? As soon as I drop the jam off, boom, you would pause my video, unpause your game and perform that step and then continue with the guide. If at any point you feel like time is getting away from you, you've learned those steps already, restart checkpoint, now those will come natural to you, right? And eventually you'll have the whole thing memorized. Now, as soon as you have the picnic set up, run back into the garden. You have to catch this groundskeeper when he's planting this sign. Notice the hesitation. He hesitates once twice on the third one honk that's going to cause him to fall through the door grab the rake and take it to the lake you'll notice in just a second that we get credit for making the groundskeeper hammer his thumb and then as soon as we put the rake in the lake we will finish our to-do list and you guys will pop two trophies the first trophy is called the garden quickly that's for completing the speed run before the church bells ring and then the second one's called the garden i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode any questions leave them down below and i'll see you guys in the next one be good if you enjoy my videos and would like to support my work you can do so at patreon i offer a ton of rewards from behind the scenes coverage rtc visual guides and workbooks even early video access monthly pledges start at one dollar a month and for those of you who support me already i greatly appreciate it